You've probably all seen one of these before. This is the ubiquitous import six inch bench grinder. Um, uh, things that you can say about it that are positive is it's a bench grinder, it has wheels and they turn, and it's very, very inexpensive. But that's about where it ends. Out of the box, these things are not very good. This one that I got, uh, maybe you got luckier than I did, but um, mine, the wheels wobbled, and so you'd turn the thing on, it would walk all over the bench, and then of course, it doesn't really have tool rest to speak of. I mean, there are pieces of metal on the front here that are in the place that a tool rest should be, but they don't really get the job done that a tool rest should do. Um, first of all, they're not, um, they're not very adjustable, so it's almost impossible to get this into a position where you can actually have a proper cutting angle for grinding a, a high-speed steel tool. There's a very small amount of adjustability in and out, and I'm not really entirely sure why these, they ramp down towards the wheel. It seems like that's just inviting something to get jammed in there. In any case, this is the first thing that needs to be fixed if I'm really going to use this as an actual uh, cutter grinder, or an actual tool grinder for the lathe. I uh, drew up and cut some, uh, CNC milled some new uh, tool rests for this grinder. Now this is cut out of a uh, two and a half inch aluminum angle, three eighths of an inch thick. And so this was, you know, originally a piece about now two and a half inches long that um, I then milled one side down to create the shape in the slot. Uh, there's no reason you would have to use a CNC machine to do this. You could just as easily mill this off square or even cut it off square and then use a quarter inch end mill and make a little adjustment slot in it so that you can mount it onto the grinder. Uh, let me show you how these go on. So the way the tool rests attach to this grinder is there's a little uh, sheet metal tab here and it's just hooked to the sheet metal guard and it has a little slot in it for a carriage bolt, six millimeter carriage bolt. Now the original carriage bolts that came with this were not long enough to go through this tab and the thickness of the aluminum and still fit the knob onto them. So I ended up having to get longer carriage bolts. These are an inch long, six millimeter M6 by one and I could not find any place that I could buy these, so I actually turned these up on a lathe. It's just out of a piece of half inch round stock, cold rolled steel 1018, and I ultimately just turned it down the lathe, cut these square by putting it in a collet block and milling the, uh, the underside of the head square, and then threading it M6 by one. So this just goes in here in the slot, just like the original one, goes through the slot in the part that I made, and the knob goes on. And it turns out that the square part is a little bit too long, so it goes through this slot and goes into here. Um, if I just put a washer around it, I think that's an M8 washer, it holds, uh, holds it off a little bit so it's a little shallower and fits better. And now we have a proper looking tool rest at least. And we can get in with a decent angle here and adjust a little bit so you can actually approach the wheel at the angle you want to grind at so that then it's possible to actually grind a cutter. So of course there's one on each side. There's one here and a mirror image to go on the other side. Now this is exactly the same, except it's, it's just mirrored so that it fits over here. Left out the washers. Please stand by, adding washers. Okay, so this gets us to the point where we've got two tool rests. 
both adjustable on the coarse wheel and the fine, but they both have the same problem. They're very, very flexible. They twist vertically, they twist horizontally. Um, this is just really not sufficient. When you actually get in and actually try to grind a cutter, they move way too much to get a consistent, to get a consistent grind. I looked at trying to replace these, uh, uh, try to replace the sheet metal parts in here, but it would have to be very large, and if I were gonna turn it out of aluminum, it would have to be uh, relatively thick and bulky, and there's not a lot of room to work with here. But since these are both rigid vertically, and the only issue is the twisting, essentially, of the sheet and bending of the sheet metal, I could just put a three quarter inch piece of steel across between these with square shoulders that bolt in, and it would make the whole thing rigid. So on this grinder, if you measure the distance, it's about seven inches. It's just slightly over. It's about seven inches and a 32nd. So uh, through the magic of video, I have a brace that I made on the lathe. So this is 3 quarter inch, 1018 cold rolled, faced to exactly seven inches and 1 32nd. And on each end, it's drilled and tapped for an M6, um, M6 screw. You could also use a quarter 20, that would work fine. Uh, this was M6 hardware that was on here, so, so that's what I used. So let me take these off. Now, of course, you can't use the carriage bolt anymore because there's no way then to tighten it. At least there's no way to tighten it on both ends. Okay, so since the knobs won't be in the picture, since this is gonna be in the center holding these parts on, I have to bring screws through from the other side. So I've got a pair of uh, one inch M6 by one cap screws with washers. So the washer goes, the screw goes through here and through the, oops, excuse me, I got that backwards. They're on the inside. So the screw goes through here then through the plate, through the tool rest, and then screws onto the steel uh, brace rod. And I'm just gonna leave it down like this so it's easy to see what's happening. And then I've got another screw that comes through the other side the same way. Now I can just bring these, now I can bring these up and adjust them, get them into the position I want, tighten down the cap screws. And with this rod in here, these ends suddenly become very, very rigid. There's essentially no flex. Vertically, there's almost nothing because these, uh, the sheet metal's very strong in that direction. And then there's no way for the sheet metal to twist in this direction or in this direction because the rigid aluminum is held square against the end of the three quarter inch uh, cold rolled spreader here. And so as a result, these things are rock solid and will not go anywhere. So you can just grind all day to your heart's content. And I've got that at the wrong angle. Now you can't adjust it with a knob anymore. You do have to have uh, an Allen wrench. But that's a very small price to pay for having a very rigid setup like this. And you can very easily get in here and make the grinds. Let me plug it in and grind something.
The other thing that I had to do to this grinder to get it to run well was, of course, to get the wheels to run true. And I did that by making a new set of arbor flanges and cleaning up the arbors that the wheels are attached to. Uh, but that will be the subject of another video. So if you're interested in making a set of tool rests for your six inch import grinder, there will be a set of drawings down in the video description with uh, detailed drawings and dimensions for the tool rests and for the brace bar. Uh, just keep in mind that you'll need to measure your grinder. Um, the spacing may be a little bit different uh, if it's a different manufacturer or if the uh, sheet metal is a slightly different shape. So you may have to adjust the length of the, the bar to fit. Just uh, get your tool, just measure the distance, subtract the thickness of the tool rest uh, flanges and uh, figure out how long you need to make yours. If it's a little bit off, it'll actually just bend the sheet metal to fit, but it'll still hold everything square, so it still should work. Well, I hope you found this useful. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe and leave any comments down below. Thanks for watching.